Welcome to r slash choosing beggars, where a guy tries to use the line, don't worry, girls tell me all the time that I'm totally normal. Our next Reddit post is from More Lazy. Many years ago, we moved to another country, so when it was time to decide what we'd be packing in the shipping container, we had to give up a lot of stuff. We had a double garage, so we parked the cars in the driveway for over a week, and we started putting the things that we weren't going to take with us in the garage for a yard sale later. Garage sale weekend comes around, and our garage was packed with stuff. There were a lot of baby things that our then three-year-old no longer needed, including a bouncer, portable cot, stroller, etc. These were all high-end pieces because, like most parents, we were afraid of getting cheap items that put our baby at risk. There were also other household things like outdoor furniture, tools, bookshelves, crystal sets, you get the picture. We put an ad in the local paper advertising a garage sale, and at 7am there were already people waiting outside our house. Our prices were all reasonable because we wanted to sell everything in the garage, and for the most part, the garage was emptying nicely. The baby items were all sitting along one wall when a choosing beggar comes in. How much for the baby items? The bouncer is 10 bucks, the portable cot is 40 bucks, and the stroller is 20 bucks. That's too expensive for such old things. I'll give you $10 for all of it. No, these items are all in good condition and the prices are fair. This is when the choosing beggar slipped up and said, I own a secondhand store and I'm telling you you're asking too much. Oh, now I see. You want my stuff for next to nothing so you can make money from my things in your store. You can have all three things for 50 bucks or you can leave. The choosing beggar then picks up those three items telling me 10 bucks is enough and that's all she's giving me. I told her that unless she had 50 bucks for those items, then she could put them down and get the hell out of my garage. She put them down and told me that she'll be back in a couple of hours and when those items were still there, she'd take them all for $5. I told her once again to get out and not come back. The garage sale was wrapping up in the afternoon, and we'd made a decent amount of money selling our old items. There were still a few odds and ends left that we planned on giving to our friends. The baby items were still there, so I called my friend, who had recently become a grandmother, to ask if she would like them. My friend was thrilled because her son and daughter-in-law both worked, so she would be watching after her grandchild during the day. This meant that she would have her own set of things for the baby in her home, making it easier for her son and daughter-in-law. Just as my friend was loading the items in her car, along comes the choosing beggar. What are you doing? I wanted those things. Too bad, they're no longer for sale. How much did you con this poor person for? Free, I'm just giving them to her. You can't do that, I offered you $10 for them. Actually, I can the items are still mine, and if I wanted to, I could just smash them to pieces or give them away. You would rather give them away than make $10? I wanted them first. You know the rules of selling. First in, first served. There's also a thing called paying a fair price, and you refuse my price, so see ya. I waved goodbye to my friend, and as the choosing beggar started to follow me into the garage to see what else was left, I hit the remote to close the garage door. In the end, my friend wanted to thank us for giving her these baby items, so once our house was all packed up, she invited us over for dinner a few times so we wouldn't have to eat takeout every night. As far as I was concerned, that was a beautiful trade-off. Down in the comments, we have this story from Mountain Dream. I had a garage sale years ago, and I advertised the starting time as 8am. I also wrote in the advertisement in all caps, NO EARLY DOOR KNOCKERS. Come the day of the yard sale, at 4 a.m. there's a knock on the door, so I wake up and answer. Hi, we wanted to look at your stuff for sale. Can you read? Yeah? Then F off. They came back at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., and 8 a.m. when I opened the yard sale. Every single time they wanted something, I added a zero to the price. On this next post, OP is a rat breeder, and he's worked really hard to breed African soft fur rats into cuddly pets through selective breeding. Selling male African soft fur rats for 30 bucks. Are you insane? Your prices are robbery and you're not even selling females. WTF, how greedy are you? I'm not selling African soft fur breeders. I'm selling pets here from a line that has been extensively selectively bred to remove the bitey traits. They're as tame as hamsters are. There are plenty of cheap rats available from feeder lines. I would recommend buying those if you feel that a better temperament isn't worth paying for. Whoa, I've seen your Facebook page. I know who you are. You're greedy and selfish. 
congratulations, you used a search function, but if you don't like me, then don't buy my rats? Or you can not be a butthole and sell me some females to go with one male. I'll give you five bucks each. The price just went up. They're $75 each now. A special deal just for you, pal. LMFAO, think you're tough, kid? Watch your back. There's not many, insert racial sir here, around here, so you're easy to find and talk smack, loser. I think you meant to type Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. That spelling lesson was a freebie. The African soft fur rats are a hundred bucks each now. But to be honest, I'd rather just blacklist you and never sell you anything now or in the future. This next post is posted to Facebook. In search of a reliable babysitter or nanny for Saturday to Sunday once a month. Sometimes more if my husband is out of town. The pay is 50 bucks a day. You would watch my kids at my home. You would be required to prepare meals and tidy up, as in help my child pick up toys, put her dishes in the dishwasher, etc. We live a little east of town. You need to arrive at my house by 5.30 a.m. and I get off work at 6.30 p.m. Time to whip out the calculator. $50 divided by, what is this, 13 hours? A 13-hour shift equals $3.84 per hour. Hey, I literally love your picnic setups. They're adorable. Thank you so much. I would love to have a picnic set up with me and about 10 of my other girlfriends. Absolutely. The rate on that is 360 bucks. That includes a two-hour picnic and charcuterie. I am an influencer in the blank area, and I was hoping you could do that picnic for free. On top of that, you would pay me a huge discounted rate of $200 to post to my social. I usually charge $1,200. What I want to know is, does this ever work? Like, literally, has this ever worked one time for any influencer? I'm supposed to go out, buy supplies, put together, I guess, a picnic basket for you and your friends, spend hours doing this work, and on top of that, I also pay you for this service? Are these influencers just out of their minds? Okay, so on this next post, I wasn't really sure if I was going to read this story for this video because the writing in this post is just awful. It's barely legible. I have to like use 100% of my brain power to figure out what on earth is going on here. But what this guy is asking is just so wild that I have to include it. In this post, the choosing beggar is a firefighter, and the firefighter is basically demanding that OP passionately hug him in exchange for networking. Anyways, I'll do my best to translate his gibberish into understandable English. Some of my friends need help to get hired and on the test questions. Why do I help? Because we're friends, and friendship is based on chemistry. All friendships are. We don't know each other, so that means that I'm giving you stuff without the chemistry part. Since I'm giving that part up, maybe you can bypass the chemistry part and just go for it. You know how I look and what I'm like. I'm putting a lot of great things on the line for you to give you a huge advantage, but to give you all this help to ask nothing in return is just insulting. So let's just say that I would never do that. Do you want a career as a firefighter? You literally have a nice, hot, actual full-time firefighter who comes from a family of firefighters that includes two chiefs. I have tons of info that could help you, and you would pass that up? Lol. Meanwhile, if you try to be friends with benefits with anyone else, it would be a total gamble. But with me, what are the chances that it could possibly be bad? Lol. I guess the worst case scenario is that you could get fired, but I'm actually super sweet. I've met girls, and honest to God, 99% of them have said things like, Gosh, I wish I didn't miss the opportunity to be with that guy. You're actually real? You're even way better in real life. You're super polite and normal. So, yeah, I can meet up with you for sure. And then, after we meet, if you want to do like a friend with benefits thing, that's perfect. I'm not giving out firefighting material that will 100% get you the job if you're not willing to reciprocate. Lol. I'm giving you a price on my hard-earned six years of experience. Also, the odds of getting a firefighter job are like 1 in 700, so I have way more on the line than you do. So, it's up to you. I'm not giving you anything until I get something. This is a very, very good trade with a very nice guy. 
Anywho, this is a golden opportunity, and I really think you're missing out here. And if you think that I'm just preaching to the choir to get with you, trust me, I can get anybody. I just thought that you were really nice, but I've never had someone be so hesitant but still demand to get what they want. Lol. Anywho, good night, and if I don't hear from you, then oh well. If I do, then I wouldn't judge or be upset. For those of you who are listening but not watching, I had to change literally every single sentence from completely incomprehensible garbage to a sentence that even then only kind of made sense because the way this guy's brain moves from topic to topic is just bizarre. Like, how can this guy not string two sentences together? Also, ladies, I'm curious. How many times have you come up to a guy and said, wow, you're actually super polite and normal? Because nothing says, don't worry, I'm a normal guy, like saying, girls tell me, oh, you're totally normal all the time. Like, I can't even step outside my front door without some girl coming up to me and being like, wow, you're totally normal. And you're super polite? Man, I wish I could date you. I mean, for a guy who claims that he can get any girl he wants, man, does he seem desperate. Also, I feel bad because I missed this line when I was reading it because it was just a total incomprehensible garbled mess. But when he was going through the list of all the things that women say about him, he also said, Also, girls say to me, wow, you're extremely good in bed. You're the best in bed. I swear that's the truth. This guy thinks that he has so much to offer, but it's like... Dude, you can't even write a complete sentence, and you think you're going to help me study for a test? If this guy is working as a full-time firefighter, then honestly, it's a miracle that he doesn't look like a piece of burnt toast by now. Tomorrow, I'm opening my first grocery store in a Title I school. I doubt that I'll be able to sleep tonight. Imagine a parent working paycheck to paycheck who can order dinner and breakfast for their family through our app and then have their child bring it home. I'm changing lives, man. No one does it like me. Just wait. And if you don't know this, a Title I school is a school that gets federal assistance because the kids who go to that school are typically from really poor families. So beneath that post, we get these responses. This is so great, but so much of that food is toxic. Just look at the peanut butter. Compare what's in Jif peanut butter to organic peanut butter or Justin's peanut butter. Please try to substitute one of these name brands with healthier options if you can. And then someone else replies, God forbid schools be about educating students. This is just one more thing to distract them. And God forbid people actually leave their homes to do basic tasks. Yeah, these are the families that are so poor that they have to take a bus to the grocery store, which means dragging those bags of food to the bus stop, on the bus, riding the bus to their homes, and then dragging the food from the bus stop to their home. Yes, God forbid that a kid brings home a jar of peanut butter so they can eat that evening. Also, these are families that are living below the poverty line. So are they really going to be paying for luxury organic foods? Lady, processed food is way better than no food. This is like <laughs> this is like watching people build houses for houses or habitats for humanity and those houses are going to go to like poor deserving people and then being like uh -huh, you call that a house? It doesn't even have a swimming pool. How are homeowners supposed to live a healthy life when they can't even go swimming in their backyard? That's so inconsiderate. On this next post, OP is selling a motorcycle for $1000. Would you be willing to take two payments of $400? I'm looking for my first bike. No payment plan, sorry. I have the title clean in hand, so I want to sell it right out. I can't do $1,000 though. I only make about $800 every two weeks. I gotcha. Yeah, I might accept 800 bucks, but it would have to be a full payment. And leave me broke for two weeks? That would suck. I'm not making you buy this bike, bro. Maybe buy a bike that doesn't cost $1,000? Do you know how hard that is? Like, $1,000 is about the cheapest I can find. For something that isn't a moped. Yeah, I know. Would you take an iPhone 6 Plus and a Nintendo Switch Lite to lower the cost? No, I'm sorry. I have both already. Oh, lol. Well, I do have my gaming PC, but I heavily use that. I do have a modded Nintendo Wii, but I don't know if you're interested in that. Or an iPhone 7. It needs a new screen because my sister can't take care of things. Lol, I feel that. I don't think I'm interested, but I hope you find a good bike. 
I was nice enough to let her use it, and she inevitably broke the screen. What about an Apple Watch Series 4? It sounds like you have a lot of stuff that you could just sell to purchase a bike. That was r slash choosing beggars, and if you like this content, check out my Patreon where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.